So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and if you guys have been following the channel you know that I've been following Windows 365 and the release updates and it was finally released to everybody on August 2nd and what Windows 365 is is Microsoft's cloud PC platform and streaming service. So basically all you need is a screen or a display with internet connection and ideally a keyboard and a mouse and then once you have all that then you can just pull down a Windows 10 or Windows 11 cloud computer from the Microsoft servers. So today we're gonna to see how it runs on the iPad Pro because this is an iPad Pro first channel and then maybe we'll do a couple other videos on how it runs on Mac OS, maybe with Sidecar and things like that. But today we're gonna to talk about how to set it up, first impressions, see how it runs, see what some of the pros and cons are with this and obviously see if it runs smoothly on the iPad Pro because again, if Microsoft can do what they want to do and what we think they can do, then this could be a game changer for a lot of people. But without further ado, let's see exactly what it's all about. So let's hop right into this video, everybody. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just go to the Windows 365 website. We're gonna talk about some of the pricing, how to set it up, how to actually get it going. So literally just type in Windows 365. I'm not gonna type in that website, but if you go to Windows 365, just type that into Google, then open up the first or the second link, not the ad link, but open that up and then this is what you're greeted with, right? Again, so the first thing that you're gonna see is that there's two purchasing options. There's Windows 365 Business, and Windows 365 Enterprise. So the business is for small to medium sized businesses, enterprises for much larger entities and organizations and things like that. But if you're a personal user, because I am a personal user, I do not use Microsoft for work. I don't, I'm not under an admin account. I'm not underneath a large organization. I just had a personal Gmail that I use with Microsoft and I just went and created a business account. So the way you do that, it's actually very, very easy. So to get into it, you can just kind of scroll through here, see what it's all about, all nice and dandy. We know exactly what it is. Click on Windows 365 Business, go to Compare Plans and Pricing, and then this is where you're gonna see the actual pricing. So you can see that the cheapest version is basic, and that's $31 a month. That gives you a CPU with two cores, four gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of storage. Now that's terrible, right? That's like an old 2012 Chromebook or anything like that, but then obviously you can spec it up a little bit more go with up to four cores, 16 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, see all plans and pricing. So we're kind of gonna break this down a little bit and you can go as high as you want. As, as you can see, I think right now, the best that they're offering for single users or small business users is 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage. That's gonna cost you $162 a month, which is, yeah, it's, it gets expensive, but that is a pretty powerful computer. Like if you spec out a MacBook Pro, with the same storage. First of all, you can't even get 32 gigs of RAM right now on a MacBook Pro, but if you wanted to do that, it's gonna cost you over two grand, $2,500, something like that. But then if we go back, and all you have to do is press buy now, right? So again, these are the small business ones. If you wanna to go to enterprise, you can check those out too. Kind of click on it, see exactly what you're dealing with. And for the most part, they're the same in terms of pricing. So if we go back to business, press buy now. And then this, I didn't really mess with this because I don't know if I'm gonna keep it after the two month, but uh, let's go with no for right now. So $35 per user per month. And then this is where it brings you, right? So I'm not gonna go through this process because I already did, but before this email, I actually had something different. So I had like a different Gmail that I use for Microsoft, and then it told me to convert that to a business account. Now again, there's no money that's being taken. They don't charge you anything. You will need a credit card. So if you don't wanna put your credit card in there, then unfortunately you won't be able to use it, but they don't charge you. I can attest to that. You get two free months. You put your credit card in. I think they take out one cent, but then give it right back and then they'll bill you at the end of the two month free trial. So once you completed the actual setup process, went through the whole login, converted into a business account, then you're good to go. And then you can start to set up your actual cloud computer. Now again, the one that I'm using is two cores, four gigabytes and 128 gigs of storage. So now to access that, now we go to windows.com. So no, windows365.microsoft.com, press enter. Let, tells you to log into your account. So I'm gonna log in, let it do its thing. It's loading my cloud PC and then you're greeted with this. So this is your admin dashboard. When you do convert your business account, you become like the admin of that account because you're the only person underneath that business account. So if you do have other users that you wanna have in there, if you do at one point create an organization or a small business, here's where you manage all the different cloud PCs for all the different users. So again, here you can see my VSB policy with Microsoft. If I wanna rename it, I can do that. So right now, this is what it's called. Again, you can see two cores, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, and we're gonna open it up. Right, so now we're getting to the point where we're gonna run Windows 10 
on the iPad Pro without needing your own version of Windows 10, right? So this is the first time where you can remote into a desktop that isn't physically yours first. iPads have been able to remote into Windows computers for a long time, but most of the time you either need to have a running backend server that you set up yourself or you need to have a Windows computer that's constantly on. So it's almost like remote play with the PlayStation. I remember with the PlayStation, I was able to remote play, but my PlayStation needed to be on, it needed to be on the internet, the game needed to be installed, the game needed to be running on the PlayStation, and then I could run it on my iPad. So this is the first time where we get true cloud PC for non-enterprise users, because Microsoft does have their Azure virtual desktop, but that requires, again, a lot more backend work. You need a tech team to help support that and things like that. This is the first time they're going all inclusive. So enough of the jabbering, let's open it up. So it opens up inside of the browser, right? And then you get prompted with this, access local resources. So I always leave it like this. I don't really wanna mess with file transfers because I'm not gonna put any sensitive data on this cloud PC. I'm gonna press allow. It's starting to open up, let it do its thing. And you can see it's connecting and launching cloud PC business. You gotta sign in one more time with that account that you used or that you created. And then little by little, it should begin to open up. And here we go. As you can see, we are in <laughs> Windows 10. So the first thing that you actually notice is that I opened it up and I have this open. That's because technically with these new cloud PCs, there's no downtime. It should open instantly. You never have to reset it unless you really need to. So no matter where you leave off on, you'll be able to come back days later and this will still be exactly how it is, right? So again, I just kind of want to walk everybody through some of the things that you can do, some of the issues that I've felt so far, and then again, whether or not this is a viable option in this moment in time. So again, this is your cloud PC. You can see it's a little bit wonky. So I'm on Safari on iPad OS 15 beta 4. So also keep that in mind. I'm on a beta operating system running a brand new software from Windows. So the first thing that I have to do is actually full screen it, because if you full screen it, then you can get that bottom bar at the bottom to see you know, your start menu and all that stuff. Again, it's still a little bit wonky because I'll show you. If I press on here, then you can see that everything kind of moves back down and it's as if these tabs right here. One thing that I do want to change up is maybe if I go into the actual Safari settings and do the compact tab bar and then go back, let's see what happens. So let it reconnect. As you can see, it's a little bit broken right now. Let's see what happens and we are loaded up. So let it kind of let the late latency fix itself a little bit. Give it a second. But you can see even when I remove that toolbar and the tabs and things like that, I still cannot see my bottom row. So again, that's another thing that's a little bit kind of broken. You have to full screen it like every single time you press something. So if I click on here, go to youtube.com. Again, if you guys can see, it's not perfect. You can see that there is latency. It's not as smooth as you want it to be. So I'm moving this around. You can see it's janky and stuff like that. So Overall, there is a lot of latency. There's a lot of things that need to get fixed, at least on the iPad side. Microsoft is not optimized for this to run on an iPad. I mean, why would they want to do that? I mean, hopefully they'll do it at some point, but you can see that this is what we're dealing with, right? So, so some of the gestures work, so I'm using two fingers to scroll through with my trackpad, but you can see, again, it's not super precise. It's nowhere near as good as it would be when using your native OS on your iPad and things like that, but it does work, right? And you can move it around. Again, it's still messing up a little bit, and then to actually move stuff around, you can drag it. But again, since this isn't a normal cursor that Windows is used to, it doesn't like move to then extend like it would on a normal desktop situation. So you have to like guess and make sure that you're perfectly on there. If not, then you hit the actual bar and then move you around. So you don't really know if what you're doing is what you want to do. So still a lot of different learning curves and, and things that you need to figure out when it comes to this, right? So let's go through some of these settings. So if you click on the settings, there isn't much to really work with right here. That's pretty much it. You press these three dots. You, all you can do is give feedback and things like that. Again, you have a full screen button, which only keeps it full screen for a second. Because if I open up, you know, let's say I go to the start menu. So again, pretty much every time you go into that full screen mode, and then every time you take another action inside of the actual full screen mode, then it kind of resets itself, right? So here you can see, that's nice. Windows on iPad Pro, I wonder who made that video. But if you go into like the settings right here, you can see that the whole bottom bar just kind of disappears. Everything gets moved down. But again, you can still go into your settings, you can mess with stuff. One thing that you do need to do to make sure that your sound is working and things like that is you go into your system and then make sure that your sound is on what you want it to be, right? So you have to allow this. But again, you have to do this every time you log in. So I did this before thinking it would stay that way and be able to portray sound and show sound off through Windows 10 on the iPad and then stay that way. But again, every single time you go in, you have to 
re-give permission to allow the microphones and the speakers and things like that, which is a little bit tedious and not too great, right? So overall, I mean, it works, right? It's not perfect. And there's a couple of things that I'm attesting this to in terms of why it's not working so well. It could be a combination of things. It could be the fact that there's a lot of people signing on on this in the beginning. This is only the second day that's been out. So there's probably a lot of people on these servers trying to figure out if this is the solution that they want. And they also offered a free trial. So again, that's even more people trying it out. Another thing that it could be is the fact that I'm on the cheapest version. So basically I only have two cores to work with, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. And those are really the only two things I can attest that to because if we go out of here and do a speed test, so let's go into an actual tab. If you go into a speed test for my Wi-Fi, my speed tests are good, right? I think you only need a minimum of like 15 megabytes download speed or 20 megabytes download speed for it to connect correctly and connect well. So you can see, right? I mean, this isn't a great portrayal of it because I am using a remote desktop. I have somebody, you know, streaming something right now. So this isn't the best Wi-Fi I've done before, but still plenty of Wi-Fi, right? Which is in the high 60s and keeps increasing. And if we get out of that, and then you can also do a actual speed test inside of the remote desktop. And then I'll put a screenshot up because that got me like a hundred download and almost a gigabyte upload speed, right? Which is a little bit crazy to think about. But overall, there's still a long way to go with Windows 365, especially on the iPad Pro. I am gonna play with it on Mac OS, see if it runs any better, see if it runs better on like a regular desktop version of, a regular desktop OS and things like that, because I think it probably will. Even though Safari is a desktop class browser, you can see that it's frozen. I'm trying to move stuff around. It's not really working. So I'm gonna have to like X out of here, restart it, open it up in browser again. So again, there's a lot of moving parts that just aren't working super well yet. So as of right now, no, I'm not gonna recommend it if you're on the iPad Pro, using it primarily only on the iPad Pro, because like I said, it's not working to the point where you're gonna make revenue gains or efficiency gains and things like that. It's just not working that well yet. If you have some static stuff, then maybe that, and you wanna pay $31 a month to look at Excel sheets and things like that directly on a cloud PC, then by all means, go for it. But for right now, there's still a ways to go. Again, it's only been 36 hours since this has been out, so I don't wanna give Microsoft too much hardship, but on the iPad Pro, it still needs a little bit of work. But hopefully that answered a bunch of questions on how to set it up, what the pricing looks like, and if it even works on the iPad Pro. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that is the entire run through setup and first impressions that I'm going to give Windows 365 for at least these first couple of days. So I want to give a more long term review because again, August 2nd released, I'm sure the servers were inundated with a bunch of people trying to get on there, trying to use the free trials, again, trying to figure out if this is what they want moving forward, right? So, so again, their servers and the amount of people pulling down cloud PCs was probably huge in comparison to, to where it is right now. So you always see a 48 hour or 72 hour spike when it comes to services like this. That's why whenever Apple updates to the entire public, it usually takes a little while for everybody to get it. So I believe that might have something to do with the latency effect and issues like that. Because like you saw, my internet connection at home is good enough to actually run this with zero latency. And then you saw that the internet connection on the cloud PC itself was actually even stronger than my in-home Wi-Fi. So I don't think it's an internet connection thing. It might be due to the fact that we're running it on iPad OS 15 beta four, we're running it on an iPad that doesn't have true mouse support or at least mouse support that Windows computers are used to. So that might also go into the actual latency effect and things like that. So overall, we need to give it a little bit more time. I still have a lot of promise and upside for it, but right this second, unless you're like in need of going into a Windows operating system and maybe opening up Excel files and things like that to view in a static format, then maybe it's worth it. But for right now, it's a little bit too much latency, maybe too many people on it. Maybe it's just the fact that it's not really meant for the iPad Pro because we did see that when you do log in, it says that this isn't fully compatible and optimized for this setting or this OS or something like that. So that could be the case, but I am gonna test it on Mac OS, see how that runs maybe on Android and see how that runs. But overall, there's still a lot of promise, still a lot of things that need to come into play. And again, another thing that could be holding me back is the fact that I went with like the entry level cloud PC service in terms of RAM, CPU usage, and overall storage. So a bunch of different factors that could be playing into the effect of it not working super well. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Stay subscribed, because we're gonna do a long-term review. I wanna use it for about a week. See if it gets better. Maybe I will upgrade the specs, the internal specs of the cloud PC to see if that helps it run a little bit better. Because ideally, I wanna be able to run Windows 10 when I need to on my iPad Pro. That is a perfect situation for me, and that's what I want. I know a lot of people also want that to make their iPad Pro their main computer. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Let me know in the comments below, are you guys going to try to sign up for Windows 365? Like I said, there's a two-month free trial. I'll link down below exactly where you need to go to download that. 
no affiliation whatsoever, it's just a link. But I do recommend giving it a try. If you guys wanna try it out, it's not that hard to set up. Again, it's a two month free trial just to literally test it out and play with it on any device that you want. So it's worth, worth a shot if it's something that you're thinking about investing in moving forward. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys wanna support the channel and get these wallpapers, link down in the description below. Check out channel sponsor Paperlike and Tiny Rigs. They're doing some awesome stuff. But until next time, 